Every year, Mojang releases a new insane update for Minecraft, and this year would be no different. They could revamp the end dimension, update inventory sizes, like the possibilities are literally endless. Flower pots. Uh, not... Not much else. Minecraft 1.20 has been one of the most controversial updates for the game in a while. It seems like people either love it, hate it, or are just mad this different one last year. But more than anything, I've heard the sentiment that Mojang is starting to get lazy. All over social media, but mainly just Twitter, you'll see posts talking about how Mojang devs struggle to add anything more than woodery textures, and you gotta admit, uh, they kind of have a point, like, come on, man. But at the same time, there's probably a lot of things that these players overlook, especially when it comes to making updates for the biggest game of all time. So what makes these updates take so long to make? And more importantly, is Mojang really getting lazy? Well, we're gonna find out 1v1 style, Twitter versus Mojang. Uh, nothing could possibly go wrong with this idea. Argument number one, modders are faster than Mojang. I hear a lot of people say that modders are able to add a lot more features than Mojang can in a shorter amount of time. And technically they're kind of right about this. Less than a day after after new features are revealed, modders are already able to recreate them pixel for pixel, whereas Mojang takes months to develop even simple gameplay mechanics. There's a few different reasons for this, like how Mojang has to design these systems from the ground up rather than modders just copying it directly, but there's also a ton of mods that add new original features on par with the vanilla game. So what's going on here? Well, it has a lot to do with something called version parity. In 2017, Mojang released the Better Together update for mobile, console, and PC players. This merged all of Minecraft's releases into one game, meaning that from now on there would only be two main versions versions of Minecraft, Minecraft Java Edition and Minecraft Bedrock Edition. You might think this would make it easier for Mojang to make updates, and if you did, you're a dumbass, because Mojang also decided to start releasing updates on both versions at the same time. Before then, the Java team could work at its own pace and pump out updates as fast as it likes, but now it was locked to how quickly the Bedrock team could make updates, which, when you're developing for so many different platforms, isn't very fast. Bedrock runs on a very different engine than Java does, meaning that features coded in Java won't always work in Bedrock, which means that if a feature you already implemented doesn't work in the other version, you'd have to go back, recode the entire thing so that it functions the same in both engines, and then implement it into the other version. Yeah, I, I would not want that to be my job. This becomes even more complicated when you realize there's different control schemes. With every feature you add, you'd have to make sure it can be used by touchscreen, controller, and keyboard and mouse simultaneously. This is actually why the offhand still hasn't been implemented on Bedrock Edition, since they can't figure out how to make it work on a 4-inch cell phone screen. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not really a good solution for these problems. You can't just cut off Bedrock Edition, it's where the majority of the player base lives. And you can't really rush its development process either, because, let's face it, that game is already buggy enough, so we're gonna have to give a point to Mojang on this one. Modders don't have to worry about porting their features to other versions of the game. But you might be asking, if this is the reason updates take so long, why were they able to make things like the Nether update? It was able to add a ton of useful features, and released at the same time on both versions. First of all, SHUT UP! I'm talking. Second of all, that's actually a pretty fair point. Argument number two, older updates added much more. In 2020, Mojang released the Nether update, which added a ton of different features to the game. New biomes, new mobs, new structures, and even a new armor and tool set, all while releasing on Bedrock and Java the same exact day. But then when you look at 1.20, which took the same amount of time to produce, you get a few miscellaneous items, which are great to have, but like, come on, man, the Nether update was so much cooler. Mojang has definitely done this in the past. Updates like Buzzy Bees and the Frostburn update, I know, I had no idea what that was before now either, definitely were lacking in features, but this paired with the disappointment of the wild update last year just kind of feels like a slap to the face. So what's the reason for this? You can't blame the recent update's quality on the pandemic because the nether update was released well into 2020, with caves and cliffs being released even later. Not only that, but they were developed in relatively the same amount of time and abided by the same parody rules. There's only one thing I can think of here, and that's what I call feature overlap. Picture the game as a box. This is the beginning of the game when you first spawn in your world, and this is the end of the game when your gear is fully maxed out and you've essentially completed it. All these big updates that Mojang has been making, like Village and pillage in the nether update add more stuff for you to do within this box. And while that's fine on its own, over time, it slowly starts to fill up and become more and more crowded. This is why I think Mojang isn't adding as many features as they were before. They're afraid that if they add too much within this box, the game is gonna feel overcrowded and over time lose the simplicity that made it so popular in the first place. And to an extent, Mojang's kinda right. With every update that's released, I've heard more and more people say that the game is getting too complicated and that it's not the same as it used to be. I personally think that that's stupid as hell, but uh, what is my opinion matter. The point is, Mojang doesn't want to overcomplicate things, which I can respect, but I think there's a way we can still add more features while keeping the game simple. Let's bring back the box example from earlier. Instead of trying to cram more features into the box, what if we instead expanded it with the release of Minecraft 2? Not actually, that would be stupid. What I mean is expanding past the end of the game. If Mojang started adding more things to do after you defeat the Ender Dragon, the early game might feel a lot less crowded. Mojang already did this with the addition of End Cities and the Elytra. These features expanded the box of the game and as far as I can tell, the community really likes them. Let's ignore the combat changes that were also made in that update for a second. Okay, the, the rest of it was fine. So, 
and I can't believe I'm saying this, Twitter actually gets a point on this one. There are ways that Mojang can add more features while still keeping the base game simple. But the next argument isn't really as straightforward. Argument number three, Microsoft can do better. When I was interviewing people for this video, there was one thing I heard more than anything else. Microsoft is one of the biggest companies in the world, so why can't they do more? You would think that a company with hundreds of thousands of employees would be able to pump out updates faster than ever, but in reality, it's more complicated than that. As far as I can tell, Mojang seems fairly removed from the main body of Microsoft, which is a good thing. If Microsoft just barged in and started ordering everyone around, then the game's quality would probably drop even more. But the other thing to realize is that being the biggest game of all time has its downsides. 176 million people played the game in January of 2023, which is almost three times the population of Brit. The problem with this is that it divides the community into a lot of different groups. There's creative players, survival players, builders, explorers, red stoners, regular stoners, the list is literally endless. And with all these different types of players, it can be hard to make an update that appeals to all of them. A builder might really want an update that gives them more building blocks to choose from, while someone who likes exploring would want new structures and loot they can discover. When there's so many different types of people that play a game, they're all looking for something different out of it, and adding a feature for one group can disappoint the others, or potentially even worse. For example, 2018! Minecraft was at an all-time low for popularity, and they needed something to put Minecraft back in the spotlight. So they released 1.13, the Aquatic Update. It added a ton of great features, but one that isn't looked back on as fondly. This is of course, the Phantom. It was voted in as part of the year before's mob vote, and won by 2%, a difference of just 45 people. And because the decision to add it was so split, a lot of people ended up hating it. It was great for those who wanted more of a challenge out of the game, but irritating for those who didn't. Players found that they were annoying, and forced them to sleep every single night, as a to doing the things they actually wanted to do in the game. You can see the issue here. With so many people that play Minecraft, it's extremely hard to make something that appeals to all of them. No matter what gets added to the game, there will always be a large group of players that dislike it. People on Twitter claiming that Minecraft isn't the same as it once was. YouTubers calling it out for making bad decisions. And ultimately, from Mojang's perspective, pleasing the entire player base at once is simply impossible. So is Mojang getting lazy? Not really. There's a lot that goes into making these updates, and the devs are honestly pretty good at doing what they do. But there's still some things I think they can work on. It feels like Mojang is getting a little scared to make big changes to the game, which is understandable given everything I've just mentioned, but also kind of disappointing. The reason we've gotten amazing updates like Village and Pillage in the Nether update is because Mojang decided to take risks. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I know more than they do, but I would appreciate it if they at least considered this argument. When voicing your opinions on the game, remember that the Mojang devs are real people. They have feelings, and when all this hate is directed at them personally for working on an update for over a year, it can feel really sucky. They want the game to succeed just as much as we do, if not more. And if we really want to make a difference, we need to be able to voice our opinions calmly and respectfully. But seriously, who thought Trails and Tales was a good update then? I think I like genuinely started having hallucinations while I was editing this video. It was weird. Like I should probably go to the doctor, but follow my Twitch because I'm, I'm going to be streaming every day this summer. At least until Twitch just destroys itself, so yeah, get in while you still can.